Welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. Today we're going to be talking about control relevant models. How do you develop a model so that it can describe something that you can use to either optimize or control a process? So we're going to be looking at a gravity drain tank today. It's just a simple level control. So we have a level that we want to try to target and we have a valve that we can either open or close. Okay, 100% open or 0% open or anywhere in between. Okay, so that we can fill our tank, but at the same time, it's also draining through the bottom, okay? So it just has an opening in the bottom and it just allows it to drain. So we want to develop a model that we can use to be able to control and optimize this system. Okay, so controlling either with a PID controller or optimizing through model predictive control, okay, or dynamic optimization. So there's just a couple steps that we want to go through in developing this model. The first one and even before we start anything else, we need to first of all identify our objective. Okay, so the very first step is identify objective. And so what is our objective for this system? Okay, so we want to be able to control level in the tank. And we're going to do that through adjusting the valve. Now, um, also with developing this model, we want to have a dynamic relationship between those two. So as I have my input of my valve, to describe dynamically how that's going to change the level in my tank. So that's the very first step. Okay, so the second step is to go ahead and draw a schematic of our system. Okay, now this schematic uh, just needs to include the sufficient details that, you know, also it can be very simplified. Okay, so what we want to do is just draw a schematic here and uh, just label our valve uh, that's filling our tank and then uh, water is going to be leaving just through this opening in the bottom. Okay, so my third, uh, my third one is actually probably the most important one, which is to list all of the assumptions uh, for my model and for the system. Okay, so as we think about the different assumptions, um, you know, you think, well, why is that so important? But really, when I've developed mathematical models, one thing that keeps coming back is that really a model, a mathematical model, especially from first principles, um, it's really not a collection of equations. It's really just a collection of assumptions, okay? And simplifying assumptions that allow us to write those equations. So we really want to pay close attention uh, to this step, which is, you know, what assumptions do we need? So a couple that come to mind, you know, maybe uh, constant density, um, low frictional losses. Um, there might be others like linear valve. Um, you could say also that maybe Bernoulli's equation applies in this case. Um, so there's a couple other assumptions that we'll need to make, but we want to make sure we list these and uh, make sure that we know what assumptions are going into this model. Um, we could do a very sophisticated model like computational fluid dynamics, uh, but really we want to have something that's simple enough to be able to control the process, uh, not too sophisticated that we get kind of lost in the details. Okay. Um, so a fourth step um, is to try to determine uh, you know, what is the form of the model that we're going to need? You know, is this a distributed system? Does it have spatial dependence or not? Okay, in this case, it doesn't, fortunately. So we can write an ordinary differential equation. If it has spatial dependence, we might need to write a partial differential equation to describe uh, this system. Okay, so uh, you think about spatial dependence in addition to time dependence for our model. In this case, the fourth step, we determine if it's an ODE or PDE. Okay, so a fifth step is to go ahead and write a dynamic balance for our system. Okay, now in this case we can use a mass balance. So I'm going to have accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption. Now in mass balances, typically unless it's a nuclear application, you don't have generation or consumption. So let's just go ahead and throw away those terms. So I just have accumulation equals the mass flow right in minus the mass flow right out. And with my schematic that I've driven, uh, drawn, you can see that that's my boundary. Anything that goes into that boundary is going to be mass flow right in. Anything that leaves that boundary is going to be mass flow right out. Okay, so the next thing after we have our equation is we want to determine degrees of freedom. How many variables and equations do we have? This is a very simple system. Uh, you know, it's just one variable and one equation, so it's very easy. If you get up to more complicated models, you'll want to pay attention to this step. Okay, so next one um, is simplification of the model. So now that we've written the model, um, let's just go ahead and combine 
unknown parameters. So there's empirical models, which are purely driven through data. Uh, there are first principles models that come from fundamentals. It doesn't need data to derive those. We're going to be developing a hybrid model, which is a combination of the two. We're going to get the form from first principles, and then we have unknown parameters that we're going to maybe use to, uh, we're going to adjust those to be able to fit to some data that we might know. Okay, so that's a hybrid model that we're going to be developing. Um, the final thing that we can do is go ahead and classify disturbances or other inputs that we have coming into our system. So in this case, we have, um, you know, you might have the city water supply pressure that changes. That might be a disturbance. And we can maybe install a pressure sensor on that supply line to have a feed forward into our controller. Um, some disturbances, you can, you know, disturbances, one characteristic of them is that you really can't change them. They just affect your process. Some disturbances you can measure, and some are unmeasured disturbances. So it's important to classify the different types of disturbances that may be affecting the process, and um, you know, just classify those as measured or unmeasured uh, disturbances. Okay, so um, now that we have our model, okay, now we're going to go ahead and fit it to the data. Now this first plot shows the fit with a linear model. Um, so we've linearized the model and then fit it to the data. This might be like a first order plus dead time model. The second one that I have is going to be a nonlinear model. So the form that we developed with the square root of the height, that makes it a nonlinear model. And, um, and it fits much better. So you can see that the nonlinear model, if the system is truly nonlinear, the nonlinear model might fit better to the system. Okay, so that concludes this demonstration on how to develop a first principles model or really a hybrid model with unknown parameters and how to fit coefficients uh, within that model.